In a previous video, we saw how to bring basic borehole data information in, such as collar or location information, geology, sample and test data, from a series of data files. The end result were a series of borehole entries in the data tree, which can be visualized in the map, and then a series of data tables, such as this geology table here, with mappings, and data preview. In this video, we will learn how to develop a custom borehole log template to display this information in a flexible way. The first step is to create a new template object. We do this under the system objects folder. And then you can see here, I have a number of borehole log templates already in use. Let's create a new one to work with. If I right click here and create a new template, call that demo template, give it a name, and then I can decide whether to have that be part of the project or to be stored at a higher level in the entire workspace. For the moment, I'll just leave it at the project level. Click OK. That adds a blank template entry to the template folder here. In order to edit a template, the easiest way to do this is to actually use a borehole record because that allows us to see the data that we want to display within the template and arrange it graphically exactly how we want it. So let's work with borehole one. I can right click on the borehole in the tree and I can view borehole log. Or I can do the same in the map. Right click the borehole location, view borehole log. This will prompt me to choose the design template that I wish to use. The newly created template should be at the bottom of the list. So if I click that, click OK, it will then ask me whether I want to remember this decision for the future and store this as the default template for this particular borehole. I'll click yes here, but you can also override that at a later date. After a moment, a blank template will appear. So we now need to start adding the columns of data that we want to see based on the tables of data in the data folder for the borehole data set. To begin with, a borehole template is non-editable. And you can tell that because all of the text and outlines are in black. To make the template editable, I can either click this edit button here on the toolbar or I can right click anywhere on the page and click edit template. This is a toggle mode. So when I click this, I then go into edit mode. To exit edit mode, I simply press the button again. So let's go back to edit mode. When we're in edit mode, you can see that a title appears in red saying editing template and all of the guidelines turn blue. As I hover over guidelines which can be moved or objects which can be edited, they will turn orange. So I can drag any of these guides around to arrange the template how I want. So let's just get that into the middle of the page. So by default, the template shows with a blank column and it expects us to add our own columns to start building up the template. The first thing I'm going to do is to edit one of the top level fields so I can see which borehole I'm working with. If I right click in any of these header fields at the top, I get edit options. So in this case, I can edit the title. This brings up a mappings dialog with a number of template fields. So I can stamp in page numbers dates and times, etc. Alternatively, I can pick from the borehole data itself to display key information. So I'm going to stamp in the borehole.location ID. So I'll delete the text here. And I'll replace that with borehole colon. And then if I click insert, that will paste in a dynamic value. 
So you can see it now says borehole BH1. So it's pulling on the name or location ID field of the borehole dynamically for that field. So let's start displaying some data for this borehole. In order to do that, I need to add what we call a column to the borehole log template. Templates can have as many columns as you wish within reason. This is the borehole column header, and this is the active area that you can right click in order to insert new columns either to the left or to the right of the current column. So I'm going to insert a geology column onto the right. There are a number of column types available with Groundhog. We call these renderers or column types, and they're different graphical representations of different types of data. Not every column type works with every type of data. But we have borehole installation, measurement curve, depth scale, geology log, and so on. So here I'm going to add a geology log. So I pick the geology log or interval column type, click OK. I will then be prompted to map that column to a particular field within the data set. So the top level is the data table. So I'm going to pull on the geology. And then I select the field containing the value I want to display. In this case, lithology. And click OK. So now you can see that a basic lithology interval column has appeared. If you have colours and ornaments within your Groundhog workspace that match the geology or lithology codes or any other codes from any fields within the borehole dataset, the colour will automatically be applied, otherwise the boxes will just be blank. At this stage, I can remove this default column to tidy the display up. It might be useful for me to be able to see labels for these lithology intervals. So I can go into the settings for each column type using right click, and then each has an edit column submenu that opens into a settings option. These dialogues will look different depending on the column type that you're working with. So we can see this is pulling on the field called lithology. I can give the column a different or alternative label if I prefer. So we could call that legend. And you can see I've got options to switch on and off color and ornament. But I can also switch on value labels, depth and elevation labels. So let's switch a couple of those on. And you can see labels have now appeared for the geology. Let's add some more columns to this template. So we're going to right click in the header of one of the columns and I'll insert this time a column on the left. And I'm going to put a scale, depth scale column in here. Click OK. This comes in by default with some calibration, but you can edit that calibration using the edit column settings sub option. Note here this dialog is different to the previous one because it's dealing with a different column type. I can have depth scales on the left and or right of this column. And I can also work in either meters or feet. And I can switch on things like minor ticks. By default, each new column uses 50% of the available space, but by dragging the guideline in between the columns, you can allocate different amounts of space. Let's add some more information from the geology column as a text column. So I'm going to insert new column on the right, select the text column type, and then I'm going to map that into the geology table and the description field. Let's also add some information about the samples. So let's insert a new column. And there is a special column type called samples. And let's map that to the samples table 
and let's display as the label, the sample type. Click OK. So now we can see the depths and the ranges and types of the samples within this particular borehole. Finally, let's pull some information from the strength test folder or table. Before I do that, I'll just reallocate the space a little better by dragging these around. So let's put the strength test on the right here. And I'm going to use a curve column type for this. And I'll map that into the strength test table. And I'll display a curve of strength values. The different columns have different settings. For example, the strength column has some graphical options under the settings submenu. I can change the color. And I can fill, for example. By default, borehole logs will be paginated and the units per page is controlled at this top level page setup option. So I can set units per page. If I set that to 20, for example, then I should be able to see the whole log on one page.